Welcome to today's video where we are diving into one of Java's most underappreciated features, the optional class. I'm excited to show you how this simple container can revolutionize your error handling and make those dreaded null pointer exceptions a thing of the past. Picture this scenario. You are deep into debugging your Java application when suddenly, bam, a null pointer exception crashes everything. This innocent looking code is a ticking time bomb. If user repository returns null, your application crashes. No graceful degradation, no friendly error message, just an exception that bubbles up and ruins someone's day. Java optional introduced in Java 8 is essentially a container object that may or may not hold a non-null value. Think of it as a special kind of box. You have to check if something's inside before trying to use it. Instead of returning null, when a value isn't available, methods can return an empty optional. This subtle shift changes everything about how we handle missing values. With this approach, the method signature itself communicates that the result might not exist. This explicit contract makes your code more self-documenting and forces proper null handling. So why should you care about optional? Let me count the ways. First, it makes your code intention revealing. When you see optional in a method signature, you immediately know that the value might not be present and you need to handle that case. Second, it prevents null pointer exceptions at their source by forcing you to check before accessing values. The compiler becomes your ally in preventing null related bugs. Third, it provides a rich API for handling the presence or absence of values elegantly. No more nested if null checks cluttering your code. And finally, it aligns with functional programming principles, allowing for more declarative and expressive code. This means your code becomes not just safer, but more readable too. Let's see optional in action with some examples. In this example, we are checking if username is available. If not, then assign it as guest. But looks at this ugly code. It looks like Dr. Strange is casting a spell. Now let's convert this code to cleaner version using optional. Isn't it so clean and more readable? Let's see another example where optional shines. Look at this code. There is lots of null handling, which is not only ugly, but error prone as well. Let's convert this code. Isn't that much cleaner? The optional version clearly shows the sequence of operations without getting lost in a maze of null checks. Now let's talk about some best practices when using optional. Do use optional as a return type when a value might not be present. Don't use optional as a parameter type. It complicates method calls and doesn't provide much benefit. Do take advantage of optional's methods like map, filter, and flat map for elegant transformations. Don't create optional of null. This defeats the purpose and will throw a null pointer exception. Use optional of nullable instead when the value might be null. And a critical mistake to avoid, never use optional just to get the value and check for null again. This completely misses the point of optional. Instead, stay within the optional context and use its methods. So there you have it. If you found this helpful, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more Java tips and tricks.